the all we know for the industrial purposes the boiler playing an important role water used for boiler so they have some characteristic properties then only we can get the actual effect so how the boiler what boiler feed water should be and what are the characteristics of water should be in case if you are not satisfying the requirements of boiler feed water what will happen and how will you overcome all these things we are going to see here so first what do you mean by boiler feed water so it is self explanatory the term itself says boiler feed water the water which is fed into the boiler for the production of steam is called as boiler feed water so that water which is fed into the boiler should be free from turbidity it should be free from oil dissolved gases alkalis and the most important thing hardness causing substances so then only there won't be any problem when the water is used in boiler in case but we cannot get always water with which is free from all these things because the natural water carries hardness causing substances and even the surface water which we are using may be contaminated with some turbidity or oil or dissolved gases and alkalis so what will happen if you are using hard water which is obtained from natural sources to the boiler so if hard water is used in boiler it leads to four major problems the first one is scale or sludge formation second priming and foaming are is called as carryover third one it causes embrittlement and fourth one is boiler corrosion so we are going to discuss one by one first if hard water is used how the sludge is formed sludge or scale is formed and what is its chemical composition and how to prevent it in case if they are not prevented what are the things which you are going to end with all we are going to see one by one so this is a boiler i have taken two things one is to explain scale formation other one is to explain sludge formation so when the water is boiled in these boilers water evaporates water goes out as steam but the soluble chemical compounds present in that boiler water since they are highly ionic so they remain in the boiler that means the concentration of the salt progressively increases at one stage a saturation point is attained during that saturation point certain chemical compounds which are present in water may appear as precipitate as shown here or it may form hard adhering precipitate which is depositing on the inner walls of the boiler if the precipitate if it is loose will remain suspended in water which leads to sludge form it is called as sludge if the precipitate is hard adhering precipitate then will not remain in suspended form as we have in the case of sludge will remain adhered on the inner walls of the precipitate that is called as scale now let us see the differences and what type of compounds will form sludge 
and what type of compounds will form scale that we are going to see here one by one. As I specified earlier, the sludge is a loose precipitate, slimy and non adhering in nature, whereas our scale is hard and adherent in nature, so which is depositing on the inner walls of the boiler forming the scale. And sludge is mainly formed by if water contains magnesium carbonate, magnesium chloride and calcium chloride, they will form such loose precipitate which will remain suspended in water forming sludge. Whereas, scale is formed by calcium bicarbonate, calcium sulphate and magnesium hydroxide, they will form hard adhering precipitate, so they are forming the scale. Okay, if water contain hardness causing substances, they are going to form sludge and scale. What are the disadvantages of it? See, the main disadvantage is in the case of sludge. See, the sludges formed here are poor conductors and thereby they do not conduct, that is, heat radiation is not possible or decreases. So, excess heat you have to supply, that means efficiency of the boiler decreases because of the sludge formation. In the form, in the case of scale, see it is acting as a thermal insulator. They are forming a coating on the inner surface. Since they are insulator in insulating in nature, heat cannot penetrate that much readily and thereby efficiency of the boiler decreases. Sometimes, due to the formation of thick scale, it leads to some crack, it leads to some explosion if there is any crack in the boiler. So, these are the main disadvantages of scale and sludge. How to prevent it? So, this can be prevented. See, only when you are using hard water, all these problems we will face. If you are using soft water, then there won't be any such sludge formation, we'll be happy. And, but we cannot go for soft water always. So, we are going for some remedial measures, blow down operation. So, we have taken a boiler with hard water. When we are boiling it, water becomes vapor. Water getting saturated with the salt. Now, that sat water which is saturated with the salt in, is in the boiler, a portion of that concentrated water is removed by fresh water. That means we are diluting it so that the saturation point is avoided so there won't be any sludge formation. That is our blow down operation. That only we are doing mostly. Whereas in the formation of scale, Scales are readily soluble in acid, so we can dissolve the scale once in a while. And we have some prior treatment before the water is taken for boiler that may be given either external or internal treatment, which you are going to see elaborately after this. Or some scale is formed how to remove it or how to avoid it, applying thermal shock, thermal shock or scrappers or by using some wire brushes, we can avoid the formation of scale. So, like this, the scale formation can be prevented 